weekend wake up, it's time to take a dive. The refreshing ways you can cool off around Western New York and the details on the early opening of Buffalo Public Pools. Plus, an overnight arrest. See the man who police say was involved in three crashes in less than 15 minutes, the charges he's facing this morning. And a warning from a family who says they were scammed out of thousands of dollars. What you should do to protect yourself. All that and more coming up on Weekend Wake Up. Live in high definition, this is Western New York's news leader. Now, News 4's Weekend Wake Up. Good morning, I'm Katie Alexander. Today is Saturday, June 30th, and we have another hour packed with news for you this morning. We're taking a live look over downtown Buffalo. You can see the sun high in the air. Really, you can see a haze across the city. I think a lot of us are going to be dealing with some hazy conditions as the temperatures continue to climb today. This morning, we are preparing for excessive and oppressive heat. News 4 meteorologist Kaylee Went is outside our studio here in North Buffalo, keeping a close eye on those conditions for us. Kaylee? Yeah, good morning, Katie, and good morning to all of you at home. Mike Saika likes to call these days 3H days. We've got hazy, hot, and humid. We'll still be lingering. Katie? Kaylee, thank you. Here's another quick reminder of the public pools that are open for the weekend ahead. In Niagara Falls, two of the city pools and the Hyde Park spray pad opened on Thursday. All of those pools are free to use and will be open through Labor Day. And if you're looking to beat the heat in Buffalo, city pools will be open starting today. Buffalo has two indoor pools and eight outdoor pools. We have those hours and locations listed on our website, WIVB.com. As the temperatures soar, many people may be headed to the local beaches, but at Woodlawn Beach, people were being told to stay out of the water. On Friday, the county health department said there were unhealthy levels of bacteria in the water at Woodlawn Beach. At this point, officials say it's a day-to-day -day call on whether swimming will be allowed or not. We're told they'll know by a little later this morning whether the water is off limits for today. You can always call before you head to the beach. Other big concerns, of course, are the sun and the heat. We spoke to a doctor who says the high temperatures could put you at risk for a heat stroke. You can start sweating profusely, but then it can get to the point where your body just cannot regulate its heat. It cannot cool down, and at times you can actually stop sweating. Uh, if you have that, that's certainly a sign you need to contact a healthcare professional. Dr. Chow said you should drink plenty of water even if you're not feeling thirsty. That's a really important way to avoid heat-related illness. As we continue to ride this heat wave, you can carry the weekend forecast in your pocket with the forewarned weather app. You can see the seven-day outlook in a couple of taps. Download it for your Apple or Android device now. All new on Weekend Wake Up, a Jamestown man has been arrested after police say he was involved in three separate crashes. Two of those crashes occurred in the town of Ellicott. The third happened in Jamestown. State police arrested 29-year-old Ramon Pondo on counts of aggravated DWI, leaving the scene of a personal injury accident and several other violations. We're told he was driving down Route 394 when he was involved in the three crashes between 7.15 and 7.30 last night. Two people had to be taken to local hospitals. The man accused of trying to kidnap his neighbor's child earlier this week is now facing additional charges. Police arrested Salvatore Prezioso Thursday. Deputies say he went into his neighbor's home in Wheatfield and tried to kidnap a six-year-old girl. They say the family confronted him and he dropped the girl and ran. He was later caught by officers and taken into custody. He was originally charged with second-degree kidnapping, but he's now also facing burglary and child endangerment charges. A city of Tonawanda man faces charges for making a number of false reports. Police say 56-year-old Patrick Roach called the department six times with different claims and complaints. All of them were found to be false. When confronted about the calls, Roach told officers, quote, that's my right. He faces a misdemeanor charge. I feel like I did my homework with him. So, you know, you never, you never know who's going to hurt you. A Niagara Falls couple has a warning to triple check contractors you may do business with. They say they were scammed out of thousands of dollars for work that was never done. And they say a contractor they hired left a mess in their yard. But as News 4's Rachel Monjovi shows us, other companies are now stepping in to help them at no charge. Rachel Monjovi, News 4. A bill to approve the use of a drug that's proven to significantly treat seizures in children is awaiting the signature of Governor Andrew Cuomo. But further delays could wipe out the chance of the drug's use in New York and lead to major medical setbacks for some kids because it's still considered illegal. 
A PDO Lex is being used in a trial basis to treat kids with seizure diseases at Oshai Children's Hospital. It's considered a Schedule One drug like a narcotic because it contains CBD oil. That oil is derived from marijuana. Now, CBD oil does not cause the high associated with marijuana use. On Friday, we heard from Holly Bentley, whose son Michael started having seizures when he was four years old. And he was having as many as 20 seizures a day while taking six medications to try to control them. After he started using CBD, Holly says Michael's medications have been cut in half and he now has seizure free days. She says the delay in Albany could be a major setback for her son. Michael, I mean, he basically was losing, lost two years of his life. He didn't learn, he wasn't growing for two years. And then all of a sudden, when he starts this drug and he's seizure free days, he's a little boy again. He can play, he's learning, he's growing. Um, to see that we might have a gap in having it and that it would potentially cause him to relapse and go back into seizure mode, um, it's heartbreaking. State Assemblyman Sean Ryan says the bill is on the way to the governor's desk. He says he is optimistic. He wasn't sure when the bill would get final approval, but Holly Bentley says she is following the situation closely. This weekend, Canada will officially strike back against President Trump's tariffs on steel and aluminum. Some U.S. lawmakers worry this could be another damaging blow to American farmers. Jessica Smith reports from Washington. We will not back down. On this week in Washington, I'm Jessica Smith. Still ahead on weekend, wake up pet problems. As we humans deal with what could be dangerously high temperatures this weekend, we're checking in with experts about the best ways to care for our four-legged friends in this heat. As temperatures rise today, you'll want to make sure your dogs have ways to stay cool. Here are a few tips and tricks that experts recommend. If you're heading out for a walk with your pup, make sure you check the sidewalk by placing the back of your hand on the pavement. If it's too hot for your hand, it's too hot for your dog's paws. Also, keep your walk short. Try not to go out during peak sun times. And a little doggy pool for your pup could be a good idea if you don't have air conditioning. There are also some more high-tech ways to keep Fido cool. And it's the best that you grab and you just like put it in the water. And then after you do that, you just put it on your dog and it controls the body temperature of your dog for at least three to four hours. But you have to keep on moistening it the best again. That way your dog doesn't get too hot. Cooling collars and cooling pads for inside your dog's kennel are also good options. Here at News 4, we've been talking about getting a little doggy paddling pool just for the News 4 team. Because <laughs> it is going to be hot this weekend, and I, for one, do not handle hot weather particularly well. Kaylee, when is there relief in sight? Is it, there? There really isn't relief in sight, at least for the next several days. It's nice, looks warm. So although it may be too hot today, I think everybody will be happy that we don't have any of that inclement weather on Wednesday. Absolutely, although my yard might disagree. <laughs> Your yard might disagree, my, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see who's celebrating a wake-up birthday this Saturday, June 30th, 2018. Julie is turning 33 today. Happy birthday, Julie. Andre is turning... Still ahead on Weekend Wake Up, bringing banking to Buffalo's east side. What city leaders say a new financial education center will do for one local neighborhood? Plus this. Adidas joins a list it doesn't want to be on and why America isn't going to run out of cheese anytime soon. I'm Diane Kinghall at the New York Stock Exchange. Of those stories and more in your CBS Money Watch report. Welcome back. New life is coming to Buffalo's east side. Northwest Bank is opening a full service office on Jefferson Avenue and city leaders are hoping the new bank and financial education center will be one of the investments that helps rebuild that area. Leaders with Northwest Bank held a groundbreaking ceremony on Friday to kick off development of a state-of-the-art office. They held a community celebration with local food trucks. The new bank will be at the corner of Jefferson and Eaton. Northwest says they've been working on the site for about two years now. The mayor says the bank is another example of the revitalization of the east side of Buffalo. This is a growing neighborhood. It is a solid neighborhood. And this investment by Northwest Bank has stimulated additional investment on Jefferson Avenue. And folks, pay attention to what Jefferson looks like now, because in another year or two, you won't recognize this area of the city. Officials with Northwest say the new bank will not only give people in the area a place to do their banking, also to get financial advice. Construction started this week, and it's expected to open in late November or early December.
A few local students are celebrating their hard work. On Friday, students from East Community High revealed this new mural they created. It's on display at the corner of Florida Street and Jefferson Avenue in Buffalo. Organizers say the students worked with local artists to create a mural with a positive message for the community. From an online data breach to a fast fashion sale and a surplus of cheese in the U.S., it's been a busy week in the world of money. Diane King Hall breaks it all down in your CBS Money Watch report. The New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King Hall. Stay with us. Kaylee brings us the weekend outlook when Weekend Wake Up returns. Western New York isn't the only area experiencing a heat wave this weekend. It was so hot in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, that one meteorologist attempted to bake cookies in the station news car. The temps inside the car reached more than 141 degrees. That is slightly under the typical 350-ish that cookies are usually baked at. But it is still hot enough to see the cookies begin to shift shapes and consistencies. The team says they never really got the desired final cookie, but it was an excellent excuse to munch on some cookie dough. Our uh, producer, Monica, brought us cookies this morning. <laughs> Fully cooked, better than the car experiment. But the car experiment does sound fun. It does sound a little bit fun. I once tried to cook an egg on a sidewalk when I was in Arizona, and that didn't work either. But it is a cool little experiment. Today in western New York, you could try that. We're climbing into the upper 80s for today. Tomorrow, even warmer. We've got heat advisories and excessive heat warnings in place. So make sure you drink lots of water and take breaks if you have to today. Thanks for joining us this morning. We'll be back tomorrow at 6. Have a great day.